All right, so here we're gonna do a kind of extended shop tour, a little more explanation on some stuff. I don't know if anybody cares, but I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't mean to really get into woodworking. Uh, we remodeled this house and I started accumulating tools and it turned into a workshop. So <laughs> guess I get into woodworking. Uh, I'm all self-taught and everything, so I don't do everything perfectly. I, I don't know how to do a lot of stuff and I'm still learning. But I will figure it out. We got our plywood kind of storage cart here that's become an overflow for everything. <laughs> got plans for that on like Wood Magazine or something. It has those little cubbies up and down the whole thing and then these. And it quickly fills up. So it's kind of overflowing out here now. But... I built that thing, I built that out of half inch plywood. I should have built it out of three quarter. Um, I was just being cheap. <laughs> You'll find that a lot around here. I don't really uh, like spending a lot of money if I don't have to. So I will use reuse construction materials. I'll just use what I already have laying around stuff. If I don't have to buy something, I try not to unless it's absolutely necessary uh starting here with the first power tool equipment this powermatic drill press is super nice uh, i got that from a friend and he was extremely generous i only paid 200 dollars for that believe it or not uh, it is a little bit damaged so i had to fix it uh, you'll find that a lot too i fix a lot of tools that are broken that people are getting rid of or just don't know how to fix themselves and I will fix it and use it myself now, these are pretty cool I like this a lot um, sort of drills and all the nailers and everything on here the saws but it's just done a it's a French cleat system which is pretty cool so then I have these French cleats all over the walls over there there's one up there, uh, back here, and some over here. So I can move stuff around as I get different tools, or if I want to move something, or just something's just not working, I can move everything around. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I'm really glad I did that. Uh, I don't like cabinets and stuff. It just fills with junk and you can't see what you have. Um, this is pretty cool. Uh, it's a miter saw station. I think I got the plans for this. Um, it's one of those magazines, like Wood Magazine or the Fine Woodworking or Fine Home Building. I think it's a Fine Home Building magazine. But it's pretty cool. Uh, I like it. I don't like the ones that are, have... Uh, a table that goes all the way across because this is the type of furniture I build out of wine barrel so all the curves and everything on here will not cut if I've got a table across here uh, I put the piece on here and it kind of it tapers down this way so this is much better in my opinion I like this and also, this whole thing can come off. The miter saw can come off with these little knobs. And you can bring it with you to a job site if you want. And this hood comes off. Like I said, I'm not into using expensive materials, so I just used some OSB I had left over from another job. And it works fantastic. Got a chute down in there put the uh, tube on here because most of the wood actually go most of the sawdust actually goes through the tube and that's just kind of like hanging down in there it's not attached to anything it's just but it works really good and then that goes down into this Y and into this guy which actually was an old craftsman 
shop vac, believe it or not. The motor used to be right down in here. Well, I saw it for free on the side of the road. I was like, hmm. I didn't realize it was a shop vac. I thought it was just a dust, dust separator. So I just converted it into a dust separator. Just yanked out the motor and hooked it up. So it works fantastic. I can't believe it. And that is just hooked up to a regular old rigid shop vac with the HEPA vac in it. And I get no dust out of it whatsoever. And the suction is crazy. And then this just hooks up to my Y here. And this just for vacuuming around the shop and everything. And got my attachments and all that sitting there. And so about that bunch of extra dust collection parts. Uh, and made a little thing for all of the saw blades, which is super handy. So then they're not just floating all over the place. I think I got plans for that from probably J Bates or DIY Tyler again. Thanks guys for the ideas. It's fantastic. Works great. And the French cleat system is able to hang everything everywhere. It's it works really well. Got a compressor here. Uh, inherited that. And line goes up. Nothing fancy here, just regular old line hooked up with some electrical conduit clamps. Nothing fancy. And that just drops down into the middle of the shop, which is super handy. You can use it pretty much anywhere. And then, so, kind of got to tell you the story of this. This is pretty awesome. I was been the beneficiary of some very generous people in my life. Uh, and I'm very thankful for that. These jet items, the mortiser, the spindle sander, the delta shop master, the... Not that I bought that recently. The disc uh, disc sander. Uh, and another thing here I'll show you in a minute. I got a bunch of this for free. Um, there was a gentleman we were doing. Uh, we were doing a short job for just like. It was like a half a day. And. He took me and my buddy out to the garage. He's like, hey, you guys uh, do any woodworking? We're like, yeah, a little bit. He says, you want some tools? And we're like, sure. We're expecting some like hand tools, right? Just to, like maybe a couple things. No, it's it's like half of a shop. It's like half of a workshop. I, we couldn't believe it. So just awesome. And that's pretty much the point where I was like, well, I guess I'm getting into woodworking. <laughs> So that's how that happened. And of course, muy importante. Uh, no musicy, no worky. I don't know why. If I don't have music, I just can't work. Uh, my brain just says, okay, it's time to go home now. <laughs> and of course, get parts organizer here. This is super handy. Takes up a kind of an odd amount of room though. So I kind of just shoved it in the corner there and it seems to be working pretty good. <coughs> Clamp rack. I don't know, I just like the, just the two two by fours. One on top, one on bottom and the clamps just kind of sit on there. It seems like the easiest way to me because it's pretty much universal and you can put any clamp on there. I'm pretty much running out of space now though. Uh, I got a large assembly table here. Uh, that's super handy if you have the room. Um, I used to have it like backed up to the table saw 
And I found out that I hated that uh, because every time I would have to cut something on the table saw, there would be, as you can see, there's always stuff on the assembly table. So you'd have to clear the table every single time, which really stinks if you're trying to use it. So I decided to move that way over here and just leave this whole center area open for rollers. That way you can come out. Works much better. Uh, sorry, I'm making dizzy. I don't buy very many tools. Uh, I either get a ridiculously good deal on them or I inherit them or just crazy stuff. They just stuff gets given to me sometimes. I'm amazed sometimes how that works. So this bandsaw I did buy uh, for full price. Well, full price is like $800, but I finally broke down and got it because I realized that if you're doing woodworking, it, you really need a bandsaw. Uh, you just couldn't get around it. Had to eventually get it. And up above all that is more lumber storage. And up there. And over here is a bunch of stuff that's probably really heavy now. Got my saws and planes all there also on the the uh, french cleat as well so i can move those around because i don't have final places for everything really ever i <laughs> keep moving things around constantly uh, this router table is ridiculously nice uh, i can't believe it but that same guy that i told you Gave, you, gave it those jet tools over there. He also gave me this. It didn't have this part built in. I built all that cabinet work in and everything. But yeah, he gave this to us. Uh, amazing. I can't believe it. it Incra, Incra fence with all the bells and whistles. I'm still trying to figure out how to use it. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty much new to all this. And I'm just learning as I go. So, it's a pretty awesome cabinet. Uh, I can't believe it. Super sturdy. Super sturdy. It's really heavy and hard to move. I'm going to put some uh, wheels on it here soon. So, if I have to do some longer stuff, I can move it out of the way. But yeah, I can't, can't believe that. <laughs> then, I just made this cart. This, uh planer for the cart from the planer and for the joiner um, kind of has them the beds at about the same level which is nice i'm six four so i make everything extra tall <laughs> it helps me a lot i don't like having to bend over but this is cool works out working out pretty good um, like i said i just use construction materials most of the time especially for my shop furniture shop fixtures and I put it on wheels but this is probably gonna get pretty shaky uh, I put it on wheels so you can pull it out and you can move it to a different spot like I say I'm moving out to the center for the for the room for the planer uh, yes I know I'm missing a wing on my planer the reason I built this is because the stand it was on before fell over and bent the outfeed plate, which stinks. I have to buy a new one. But uh, yeah, so this is on wheels. And I found this. Kind of like a combination of like three different ideas uh, that I found on what, like Instagram, Pinterest, a bunch of different stuff. Finally came up with my own uh, plan here. So, what you do is undo that guy. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. Kind of pick it up a little bit. And then flip that underneath. And this just sits down on the ground. 
and the wheels go up inside, which works really well. And then it is super stable and it has no chance of falling over. I'll put it back up. Maybe. That's really hard to do with one hand. Yeah, there you go. And just pull it back up to pick it back up and latch this. The reason for the latch is the wheel's center of gravity is like right at the center. So if you try and move it without latching it, the wheels actually flip back underneath. So it needs a latch. So there's that. There's all those <laughs> tell me how barrels I've went through. Little wine barrels. Those are all the rings. And then, of course, we got table saw here with another Incra fence. Uh, I got this from another very generous friend. Uh, I bought the whole thing off of him for $500. <laughs> it is a jet table saw, not cheap normally. And the Incra fence probably costs as much as the table saw. So, very generous friends. And just build a shelf down here for jigs and guides and all that stuff. It's kind of dark over here. Super, super nice. So, with it stopped right here, you cut up to, I believe it's 32 inches. A little bit more, I think. Uh, but then... You can move this actually, loosen, you can slide this whole thing back and I can go even more, I think. Oh, what was it? So this is like 40, I think it's 52 inches actually. I can go up to. Kind of weird because this thing sticks way out at the end, but it works. Um, yeah. Super cool. Um, this jet table saw, though, I don't know if you can see this. Nope, too dark. So, I had to make this little bracket for it. Uh, the mechanism to blaze and lower the blade on these is just a horrible design. I don't know if I still have the other thing. Yeah, it was this. And it uses a belt mechanism to raise and lower the blade, except for the belt wears out super fast. And the belt costs like $50. And also is really, really loose. It's just a really bad design. So I redesigned it. <laughs> I took off the, there's a bar. There's a bar right here that was on the back and it went, well, I covered up the hole, but you can see that little indentation. That's where it came out. And that was supposed to be for like a, uh, a blade guard. It was weird. So I'd come up here and guard the blade. Total garbage. Didn't work at all. It was also a terrible design. <laughs> Maybe I'm starting to know why he got rid of the tables on that. <laughs> so I redesigned it. There's actually a spot where that same bar can screw in the front. And then I just attached the uh, mechanism to go make it go up and down. I attached that directly. Man, I wish there was more light. I attached that directly to the mechanism that makes it go up and down. And then basically this is just there for support. Uh, and it moves with the table saw uh, when you go side to side. I don't know if you can see it. Not really, I'm sorry. But that was my workaround for that. It was kind of a really annoying problem for a long time. So the dust collection comes out of there, out of the bottom, and goes over my dust collector. So I have 
two blast two main blast gates here uh, and then this one goes to the table file that one goes to everything else uh, and you can see how I hooked it up so I have everything from there over this way all hooked up to this dust collection and it goes in here and this is actually just a trash can and I have the dust collection hooked up to a thine baffle and an old Harbor Freight um, fan dust collection unit that I have had for a long time. Um, then I modified that into a thine baffle and then the fan. And that goes outside. The exhaust goes outside. And let me. Let me show you where it goes. I hope I'm not making you sick. So that comes out the window in here, and then there's six inches of water in the bottom of that. And there's a bunch of little holes cut in it. So the water catches, I'd say, 90% of the dust, and any other just comes out into the environment, but I live in the mountains, so I do not care. <laughs> uh, neighbors don't care, Doesn't it barely makes any dust. Uh, I didn't want to have to buy a $300 wind filter in order to do that, and so that was my solution instead which I thought worked pretty good. And let's see, missing anything. I just made a filter, an air filter. Like I said, I don't like buying stuff if I don't have to. Um, I do maintenance at a large facility sometimes and they get rid of these all the time and they're perfectly clean. So I take a couple out of the garbage and they're nice. They work really well. And that is just an attic fan that I had extra from the job laying around. And it works super good. Um, I hooked it up to the lighting circuit, actually. It ain't pretty, but man, it works. And when I turn off the lights at the end of the day, this turns off also, which is super nice. Don't fall. So, that turns off as well. Or you can manually turn it off with the switch. Yes. What else? Did I miss anything? Ah, oh, these guys. Yes, those came with the table saw as well. Uh, so, got a crazy, crazy good deal on that. This is just a Harbor Freight bench. It's not great, but it works all right. Um, if you have one, I highly suggest putting a cross brace in the back because they are notoriously wobbly. But once I put that cross brace in, it is solid. It does not move at all, which is much better. Before it would just sway back and forth like an inch when you're trying to whale on something that doesn't help very much so that is pretty much it uh, let me know if you have any questions or suggestions like i said i'm just i'm not a professional at all i'm just getting into this and finding what i can find and using what i already have for the most part and that's what I like to do. All right. Thanks.